Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> uh, as you said, my name is Jeremy. Um, I work with Rule Engines. Uh, if you've ever been around the Nashville Java User Group, you've probably seen me do a couple of talks on that. I kind of geek out on Rule Engines and their abilities. So that's I'm going to share a little bit about the uh, Ready algorithm that sits behind. Uh, in particular, the one I play with is Rules. Rules. Um, it drives a particular flavor of Ready, known as Ready OO. Uh, but the basic principles behind most Rule Engines you'll see are the same. Um, so why should you care about Rule Engines? Uh, for one, <laughs> I couldn't ask for a better avenue than what I was given at the end of the last talk. Uh, fraud detection. One of the largest banks in Brazil. Um, <clears throat> well, first I should say, fraud detection within a bank would be something such as a, a suspicious transaction. You know, suddenly you're in Florida and Tennessee at the same time. Some kind of flag goes up. That's fraud. Um, sort of the, the, the brain behind the, the reasoning of different events. Um, so <clears throat> one of the largest banks in Brazil actually uses drills to, to lead their, <clears throat> excuse me, to lead their fraud detection system. Um, and some numbers to consider with these guys. They do about 400 transactions a second. Doing the math out, it's 1.4 million transactions an hour. A little over 33 million transactions a day. With each one of these transactions, there's a pool of 30 million transactions that are historical data that they have to pull from and see exactly what's related and do some analysis on that information. Okay, so you're looking at very large, uh, I won't say data mining, I'll say a little bit of data analysis, but you're looking to dig and find commonalities between a whole lot of data really fast. Reedy helps us do that by doing a little bit of separation of logic, which is sort of the how do we do something from the data, which is what are we doing it to, okay? So rule systems allow you to, to define a process sort of step by step, if you will, without actually considering the data that you're doing the steps to. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> kind of interesting. I don't know if anybody's used Prezi, but uh, every now and then I tend to get a little uh, distracted with Prezi um, and do things like, you know, uh, <laughs> kind of wander a little astray as I'm making my slides. Uh, I got this set up and saw the logic data and just couldn't help myself. I had, I had to throw that in there. Um, <clears throat> but a reading network actually uh, helps take that logic and break it down into commonalities between patterns. Okay, Pattern matching is what the game is all about. Uh, something over here looks similar to something over here. These two things have a commonality. They have a relationship that we care about. Okay, so how does Reedy help us do that any faster than any other system? If you weren't using a rule engine, if you were simply standing a system up, you're probably going to step through things one, th one, one consideration at a time, one fact at a time, one loan at a time, one transaction at a time. It's pretty slow. It's pretty antiquated. You're going to have to load the entire thing up, do a full analysis, drop it, and move on to the next. You're not exactly going to be able to keep up with you know, 30 million transactions for 36 million throughout a day. Uh, you're just simply going to fall behind. Um, Re kind of helps us do that by breaking out the patterns and, and allowing us to throw data at the patterns that we see. Um, so how do we do that? Let's do a simple comparison of something you've probably seen or heard of, frequent flyer miles. Um, just as an example, uh, Southwest uses drills to kind of push this system as well as their gate departures, arrivals, timing. Uh, don't hate the rule engine, hate the, hate the airline, we're not responsible. Um, <clears throat> when things go wrong, it's definitely them, not us. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> if we look at some basis to flights, maybe you have miles that you've flown or over 500 or less than 500 or you're a partner or non-partner airline. Um, the other thing that we want to consider is the passenger. Are you a member? Are you a gold member? Are you a silver member? Did you fly over 250,000 miles last year? Did you fly more than 100,000 and less than 250? Maybe that's silver and the, the, the first is gold. Um, we have those objects. We can build out... <clears throat> start to, to establish our patterns within the Reedy network. You start, obviously, with your object nodes. The flight and the passenger are things that we care about. They're the basis of the patterns that we're looking to establish. From there, we'd look into what we call alpha nodes. Okay? These are simple one-to-one -one relationships of the facts that we saw and the things that we're interested in. Um, a flight less than 500 miles. Very simple one-step relationship, easy to identify. So if we have these one-step relationships, Ultimately, we're going to take some sort of action. Okay? Based on the information that we see, we want to do something. Maybe we want to add 500 bonus miles, 100 bonus miles. We want to give somebody a free flight based on the different patterns that we have. Okay? The beauty of a rule engine is that we can put these actions aside. We know these are the rewards we want to give, but we want to be able to factorialize and, and really change the way we get to these actions. Maybe this month we do a free flight. Next month we do an extra 1,000 miles. Um, you set the actions aside and you change the patterns that you're looking for to reach the actions. We do that. First, in the alpha network, you can do direct links, um, simple one-to-one, -one, or say you have a rule that's looking to say if you're silver and you've flown more than 100 or less than 250, you're still dealing specifically with a passenger, so you end up with a simple join node. Okay? 
Still a basic relationship, but only about passenger. Um, most systems outside of real engines are really good at handling these types of things. Um, they're pretty straightforward. You, when you have the data in front of you, you have the data in front of you, you can analyze the object and toss it aside. Okay, where it gets really particular is when you step from one object to another. When you start looking for commonalities or patterns between two different types of objects. That's where Reedy <coughs> plays out with a what we call beta network. Okay, a beta is where we can take two different patterns, join these things together in a join node, and throw them towards some common goal. So if you're a partner, you're, I'm sorry, you're on a partner flight and you've flown more than 250,000 miles last year, you get a free flight. So um, <coughs> how does it actually help us process large amounts of data? How does it actually help you stay fast? How is this any better than uh, you know, 300 lines of Java or, or language of your choice, polyglotters out there, that actually steps through and, and does the same kind of analysis for you? Um, the beauty for Drools is, first, that we do the logic up front. Okay? These patterns are established any time I load the rules. So I can take every bit of your rule information on the left, never take an instance of a flight or an instance of a passenger, and I can build out this network before you ever throw any information at me. From there, when you drop somebody in, it's just like playing Plinko. Okay? There's no decision to be made, you just simply let it fall through the lines. <clears throat> we also, oh man, Prezi murdered my rules. I swear rules typically look better than that. <clears throat> but um, Reedy also allows us to reuse a lot of the nodes that we have. Um, so for instance, the beta network where we have the join nodes, where you have multiple rules that have the same condition. Um, it, it gets very repetitive once you get into the basics of rules. You look for the same things very often over many different patterns. Okay? You, you have complex conditions. Well, <clears throat> to show that we aren't always about business and about boring, these are, I wish I had a better example for you, these are rules that some of the rules guys put together to actually emulate the Pac-Man game. It's 100% business rule based. Um, <clears throat> I will uh, definitely clean this up before we share out so you can get a better look at those rules. Um, but yeah, we, we can do several different things with rules. There's a little more complexity here beyond flight and passenger. Obviously, there's several things you want to keep up with. There's the state of the game, state of each one of the characters, state of each one of the objects within the game, multiple objects you want to care about. So it gets a little more, uh, a little more complex than the example I was showing you all ago. So let's take a look at what this would actually look like in Reedy OO. <coughs> this is your Reedy OO network for that game, for those rules. It's a subset of those rules. Obviously, it's not the entire thing, which would kind of kill the projection up here. Um, it wouldn't be very readable, but I, I pulled apart a small set, loaded that up, pulled out the Reedy network to take a look at what that looks like. Um, there's some small differences between what you'll see from Reedy OO output and what you see from what I was doing, which was just alpha and beta, due to the entry and the way Reedy OO works. Um, you have simply a root Reedy node, which is sort of how you kind of tie it all together, and Drool's works what's called an entry point. Um, for us, at this point, we have a single entry point. We don't really care. Um, where that comes into play is if you do things like complex event processing, for instance, you are an airline and you care about status and departure and flights, you may have different exact same rules, but different locations or origin points that that may come from. This plane landed, well, it makes a big difference. Did it land at this airport or this one? It's two different entry points. Um, if we look past that, we start to get into the actual alpha network or the object type nodes. So each one of those represents a character, uh, a thing in the game, a state, some model POJO object that we care about. From there, we get into the alpha nodes, which are the direct link relationships. These are the simplistic, one property check about one object, very straightforward relationship. We got that, move right along. Left input adapter node. If you have some sort of complexity to a join, um, for instance, if you have a complex relationship on the left-hand side of a rule, meaning you have a pattern that, that has an and or an or, or some kind of multiple Boolean condition about it, a left input adapter node is what you get. Okay, this actually represents the relationship of a, a complexity. And then the beauty of Reedy comes out in the join nodes or beta network. Each one of these patterns that matches across objects is mapped out as a single join node. Every pattern or every rule that uses that same set of patterns will share a join node. They will all share alpha nodes. So you may have a million rules, but if you're only doing 30 conditional checks in there, you're only gonna have 30 nodes. And from there you just drop in you know, as many objects as you want and they're gonna go as fast as it can process. And of course, at the end, you have terminal nodes, or the action that you care to take. Sort of the, out, the output of it all. So what, is that, so, so what does Reedy actually get us? Why, why do you want to go into that? What, what process does it actually buy for us? Um, for one, you reduce processing time. Reedy takes away the need to consider things in order. Okay, I can drop masses of objects into the system, 
and allow them each to sort of plinko their way through, but I can allow, it's, it would be like dropping a hundred plink game or a hundred discs into the plinko game at the same time. They're all going to find their path, but there's no specific order in which they have to go through the system. Reuse of nodes. Because of the relationship sharing and because we're cutting down on the complexity of the issue, um, it makes it a little bit faster. Um, <clears throat> Reedy does tend to be pretty memory intensive because all these different nodes do live in memory. It's a trade-off of processing speed to RAM. Um, so if you work in rules engines, you do get a little into a little bit of a beefy, maybe the, the Windows 64 gig machine. <laughs> maybe that's what they're after. I don't, know, I don't know that I would go for Windows for it, but hey, you know, to each their own. <clears throat> and recycle the process, simply allowing you to step through that process uh, repeatedly. Um, I can tear down a knowledge base here, ship it overseas, let them stand up over there running their objects. Um, I can take, if I'm a loan system, I can run a loan at the instant it comes through the door, or I can wait and run batches of 5,000 at night. The results are going to be the same, and I don't have to change that knowledge base. Um, so basically, yeah, that's, that's a little bit about the brains that sit behind the rules. Um, <clears throat> come out and join us at NJUG sometime. You'll get a lot more, I'm sure, on, on the actual implication of rules. <clears throat>